about cycles, and before I go into the music, I want to ask you how many of you are aware of the tragedy of Oedipus Rex. Now there's a purpose for me asking this. Um, I'm going to begin with the riddle of the Sphinx. And maybe some of you know it if you've been educated in that uh, classical uh, style. But here's the riddle. What creature walks on four legs in the morning, on two legs in the afternoon, and on three legs in the evening? So what's the answer? Amen. Oh, you would have saved the city of Thebes in that case. <laughs> so the answer is not necessarily man in our more progressive times, but a person, right? A person. And the reason I ask you this is because I want you to consider that answer as a type of cycle. Now, it's enough to say that we have a life cycle as human beings. We're born, we develop, and we decline. But this specific answer is very much a cycle that we can assign different parts to. There are three elements to this answer, the beginning, the middle, and the end. And if we were to designate each one of those sections a letter, for example, infancy, where the baby's crawling on all four, that could be called A. And then the development of that infant into an adult on two legs in the uh, afternoon of our lives, the peak of our lives, that could be section B. And then when we come back, when we return, we come back to a type of variation off of A. That is, we're not quite infants, but we're close to that feebleness with which we begin. And of course, this is a very depressing uh, <laughs> answer. I'm, I'm just speaking in a generic way. I'm not saying that any of us will necessarily be that way. But here we are on three legs, meaning our two legs plus the cane in the afternoon of our lives, or the evening of our lives, rather. So let's assign that last section a variation of A, which in musical terminology is known as A prime. So we have form A, B, A prime. Now this is a type of cycle. This is a cycle that undergoes great change. And so we've developed from our infancy into adulthood. And this is one of the cycles that I want you to consider as we progress through the music today. And you have a program in front of you, and I'll be talking about each one of these pieces so that hopefully this idea is clear. That's not the only cycle we'll be dealing with today. Before I go any further, before I play any music for you, I also want to tell you about how Oedipus Rex turns out. How there are so many cycles within the actual play that it's one large cycle nested inside of other cycles. For example, what is it that brings Oedipus to Thebes in the first place? For those of you who know, I feel like I should be asking you to take notes. <laughs> Don't worry, there won't be any quizzes afterwards, just tomorrow. <laughs> so Oedipus is trying to escape his fate. His fate, as proclaimed by the oracle, that he will murder his own father and have children with his own mother. And to escape this horrible, horrible fate, he runs away from his adoptive parents, although he doesn't know that. And on the crossroads, on the way to Thebes, he meets his real father, Elias, murders him. Pretty impressive kid, actually, this Oedipus. And then proceeds on to Thebes, where he encounters the Sphinx. He solves that riddle that all of us just solved together, and he becomes the king of Thebes, and he takes the widow queen as his wife, but that's also his mother. But of course, he doesn't know any of this. And so the tragedy begins with this remarkable heroism on his part, 
gouges out his eyes, and he insists that he be exiled from Thebes. However, his brother-in-law, Creon, says that, why don't you wait in the palace, and we'll let the oracle decide what to do with you. And that's the end of the play. But there is a very interesting moment in an adaptation of this tragedy by the great composer Stravinsky. Stravinsky wrote an opera oratorio in 1927 called Oedipus Rex. And if you have the privilege of uh, seeing it, I hope you will look for it. At the end of that particular performance, there is an additional moment at the very, very end of the tragedy. Oedipus does not go back to the castle, or his kingdom rather, uh, to wait or await the proclamation of the oracle for what he should do. Rather, he is exiled from the city. He walks out of the city. And as he does so, blinded and supported by his daughters, there's a touching moment at the end of the tragedy. That is, the people of Thebes, rather than push him away, they wept as he slowly walked away from the city because they lost this great king. And so one type of cycle has been completed with the end of this tragedy. Specifically, all of the innocence, the naivete, the lack of knowledge on the part of Oedipus is, is gone. On the part of the people of Thebes is gone. On the part of the major characters, with one exception, of course, the blind prophet Tiresias, he knew all along. But everyone else was in the dark. And then, of course, metaphorically, they come to the light. They understand what terrible sin has been committed. And so innocence is lost. I want you to remember that as another theme throughout my talk today, the idea of things lost. And we'll get there again when I come to the last part of the program, a piece by Schubert, and how many things have been lost within that very piece. So that's my introduction for you. And now I need to get to some certain technicalities uh, before we begin. So the first piece on the program is a work by Johann Sebastian Bach. And here you'll excuse me, I'll get my music out for this. And this is, of course, the well-known C major prelude from the Well-Tempered Clavier from 1722. Now, in this piece, we began this lecture with a very dark topic. After all, death and incest and murder are the best way to begin any lecture, I think. But here I'd like to talk about life instead. Now, with this piece, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the theory of tonal music. That is the music that begins roughly, or is codified and developed roughly in the middle of the 17th century, 1660s, 1670s in Europe, and continues for another 200 years up until about the 1880s or so. Now, all of the music made in Europe during this time, it covers the epochs of the Baroque, the classical age, the romantic age of the 19th century, although certainly stylistically there are many differences. But there are some common threads, and I'd like to share those with you right now. Many of these I think you'll know just by hearing them. So for one thing, let's talk about a very basic cycle, the cycle of the scale. How many of you play piano, just out of curiosity? Can I invite you up here to play? How many of you remember this from your days as pianists? That's the tonic again. 
So the aesthetic goal of all tonal music is to return to that tonic. If we don't, then the piece of music within which this scale is functioning cannot come to a close. So think of it as the exit. Without this note, we have no exit. Now, in a way, this exit means that we have moved into stillness, into aesthetic stillness. The piece is over. Without the tonic, the piece is alive. So are there other pitches within this system that promote life within the music? And there is one that's very important, and that's the fifth note of the scale. So let's count up. One, two, that's the fifth note of the scale, and this also has a name. They all have names, but we just have to worry about this one for now. This one is called the dominant. So while we sustain the dominant, this is the piece very much alive. What happens to close the piece, to reach resolution, to reach aesthetic transcendence? And if you're very dark today, death, kind of aesthetic death, we go to the tonic. So if you hear this kind of pattern, we have finished the music, and that's it. Now, there are many levels, of course, to this. I'm simplifying tremendously, but I want you to listen to this very basic idea. If we come to the tonic, we're finished. If we sustain the dominant, and that's the fifth note of the scale, then we are alive. Now, let me begin finally by getting into some of this music. So here's that first prelude. And first I'm going to break it down into parts and then I'll play the whole thing. Now don't worry, I'm not going to do this for every single piece on the program because then we'd be here till about 11 p.m. So I want this to be succinct after all, but I need to lay down some groundwork so that we can continue forward. So this piece of music begins with something, actually let me set this up so I can speak and play. music, in tonal music, 
there are similar moments. And this piece of music in the Bach that I'm about to play for you, that moment continues as Bach sustains the dominant, remember that, the fifth note of the scale, in the bass over and over and over again. Let me play that section for you just so you can hear what I mean. It's almost comical how many times you hear this note G. So let me play this for you. This is the moment of intense drama, but also life-affirming drama, because after all, the dominant is life-sustaining. The tonic represents closure. So here's that section. See if you can feel some of that tension building up. Every great tonal composer that build 